Okay, story time, real quick, before I jump into this QLS. 2003, Baltimore. Little Brother is performing our very first show in Baltimore ever. This is the early days of the listening. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the same show I took the audio from on the minstrel show where I used the support. Support your own, support your own. Uh, support your own, man. Because we support, done been on the other support. side of this shit. We done been on the other side of this shit. Niggas don't even get love in their home state. And then two years later when niggas blow, it's like, oh, we always loved y'all. Um, I think it's from that same show, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, this is one of the early shows in Baltimore. We're performing at this bar. I can't even remember the name. I don't even know if it's still there. Pooh, if you remember, you want to tap in, please uh, refresh my memory because I do not remember. <laughs> but anyway, so we're performing at this bar. And we look out and we see it has like a second, like a balcony, whatever. And it's all these guys up there just like performing and going in. And at that time, we would use intros for our shows based on the city that we were going to. So that particular night, we had used the intro from The Wire and the crowd, like, they going crazy, you know what I'm saying? So we do the show, all these guys up on top, they going in. So finish the show, go out in the crowd, and by this time, the guys up top have come down, and we realize that it was the cast of The Fucking Wire. They came to the show. Uh, Hurt, Carver, Bubbles, nigga, uh... Um, all of them, like, it was a lot of them, but, uh, uh, Sabatka, Nick Sabatka, um, Pablo Schreiber, the actor, he was there, um, cause they were filming season two at that time. So, um, so yeah, man, so we're, we're there and like kicking them and they're just like the most sweetest guys, like super cool. So we leave and we go to the dressing room to get dressed and we hear our manager coming and we hear him saying, walking down the hall saying, Omar coming, Omar coming. And I just think he's just playing because we in Baltimore. I'm like, all right, this nigga probably just playing, whatever. Omar coming, Omar coming. I'm like, what? So I manage Big Doe. He walks in and he turns the corner. And when he turns the corner, we see Michael K. Williams is behind him. Me and Pooh lose our fucking minds. Like, holy shit. And so we walk up to him, like, oh shit, what up, what up? It was good. We dap him up. He gave us big hugs. And she was like, yo, y'all killed that shit. That shit was crazy. Like, he was just showing us crazy love. And, um, you know, and I sat down and talked to him for a little bit. And I asked him, I said, yo, so Omar, tell me. And I caught myself. I said, oh, my fault, bro. I ain't mean to call. He said, man, I never forget this. He said, man, look. He said, man, my mama called me Omar, bro. He said, my mom called me Omar. He said, dude, that's the biggest compliment you could ever pay, you know, an actor to call them, you know, by that role. And uh, I never forgot that, you know. And, um, you know, that was the first and only time we met. You know, we had and have, you know, several friends in common. But, you know, um, when I heard the news of him passing yesterday, I just uh, thought I would share this story. Pooh, he talked about it a little bit on on, on Twitter. Uh, I thought I would, you know, give a little more detail. But, yeah, man, he was just a um, a beautiful, beautiful spirit. Just a beautiful human being. Uh just so genuine. And um, we were nobodies at that time. So it wasn't like he was gassing us up. I mean, we performing at this little bar. But, you know, he treated us like we just rocked Madison Square Garden. And uh, I never forgot that. So, um, yeah, just thought I'd share a few words. And, um, man, we, we lost a real one. He was a just a, a, a beautiful human being. So, um, Michael K. Williams, rest in peace. Holla.